Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My yes. name is Earl Rush. I'm with StuckOnSalsa.com. I want to thank everybody for coming out today to this uh, fabulous event, the tribute to Frankie Martinez. Let's give a big hand for Frankie Martinez coming in town. And also, let's give a big hand for the producer of La Epica 1 and 2, Josue Joseph. <laughs> I'm going to ask a couple of questions here, not too many, because I know after seeing the movie and everything, you guys really want to go out and dance. we got a great event up for you all. Also, I'd like to uh, give a special shout out. At the end of the movie, they showed some of the legends from the parade, and we have one of the ladies here live, Miss Carmen Cruz. Let's yeah. give a big hand. <laughs> and we also have one of my... Dear friends, the uh, the base the basis player that was in the movie, Alfonso Panamera. <laughs> As an all one dancer, I thought about switching to salsa on two, but it looks the same to me. <laughs> salsa on two dancers start on the first beat of the music and they end on the seventh, just like what we do on one. I've been told that the difference in the change of direction and body movement, but after visiting several classes in New York, I don't see the difference. Can you explain and demonstrate the difference? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, um, I, I think that, uh, I, you know, I started dancing on one, and I started dancing on one because I, I found an ad in the Yellow Pages. Back then, it was Yellow Pages. <laughs> it wasn't. Google, right? So, and the ad in the yellow pages said uh, salsa, so I went running over there and it ended up being a ballroom school and, and uh, you know, they were teaching me ballroom and I was, I was breaking on one. There was a young Dominican man there that saw me, my frustration, because I was frustrated because I was going to the clubs and I was noticing that I wasn't doing what they were doing. That's not what they're teaching me over there. So, um, he told me where I had to go to see what was going on, uh, even if it wasn't just to go and learn it somewhere else, but to get an idea uh, that was closer to what it was that I was looking for, because I, I came into this through being in love with music, and my father kind of bred in me this love for Latin music and told me stories about going to visit the musicians and, and uh, you know, seeing these guys play the Battle of the Two Titos at, at uh, Madison Square Garden with Tito Puente and Tito Rodriguez. And these stories gave me a certain feeling that was what made me fall in love with the music. And when I went looking for a way to express that, I found a method that n wasn't necessarily quenching that feeling. It wasn't necessarily giving me that feeling that my father was giving me. That's what I was looking for. And my father left m my home when I was f five years old, so uh, you know we had very little contact. Anyways. You know, when I, I was very comfortable on one, and dancing on two was a very kind of strange thing, and my body did not want to deal with it at first. But when I did have it, it felt there was, there was something, uh, and I'll use this for lack of a better word, but there was something very sublime about how I felt while I was moving that way. And, and I later understood that that had to do with, with, with a couple of things. The, the difference is, is something uh, that, you know, if you ask somebody uh, who doesn't understand much about something to recognize a difference in it uh, between something that they may be familiar with, it's very difficult for them because they haven't experienced it. And I think that, you know, experiencing it gives you a very clear idea of why it feels differently. It's not about necessarily that it looks different because if you take any... If you take anything that's meant to be danced to 4-4 four, four timing and you dance it to music that has 4-4 four, four timing, it's gonna, it's, you, you can do it. It's not about the fact that you can do it. And a lot of the things that I think that uh, you know, we do today in you know, what we think is coming up with dance ideas and possibilities are, are random, right? And they're, they're not necessarily musically based on anything. 
we're doing physical randomness that happens to work because we're doing it within an 8-beat structure that works with music that has an 8-beat structure. Um, and so, yeah, it doesn't look different to the naked eye. Uh, it doesn't look different to the naked ear. Um, and it's a difficult thing. It's a difficult thing to ask somebody to get that by seeing it or, or experiencing it shallowly. What I started to realize, um, first of all, if you look at it, there's a lot of movement. I call it the Mac and PC uh, <laughs> academic, right? If you look at it, there's a lot of people that start on PCs and then they end up getting a Mac and they go, wow, this is kind of cool, right? Um, you don't get traffic in the other direction. You don't get people that start on Mac and then find PC <laughs> and say, wow, this is really cool, right? There's a lot of traffic, uh, people starting on one and ending up on two, and they say, wow, this is what I've been looking for. There is zero traffic in the opposite direction. <laughs> Not less, zero traffic in the opposite direction, right? Now, what happened with me was that when I, when I started this, I could dance on one, and when I saw the two, it was very difficult for me to, to make the switch, right? Um, but once I did understand it, once it became comfortable to my body, I could dance with anybody on anything because it was necessary for me to learn about music in order to dance on two. It was not necessarily necessary for me to learn about music in order to dance on one. This is for Jose. I was calling him Jose for two years. He was like, Earl, I love you. My name's Josue. <laughs> okay? All right. All right, Mr. Joseph. Of all the dancers, why is Frankie Martinez your choice for a feature in your movie? Without being politically correct. <laughs> Without being diplomatic, yeah. there were Careful. several. <laughs> After watching part two, you'll have known, you'll be able to identify a mambo, a song montuno, a guajira, a danzón, and a guaguancó. But I said I need a dancer that can interpret each of those rhythms as well. And so not that anyone else could not, but I wanted someone who had a relationship with the music, and that is the reason why I chose Frankie Martinez. Some of the dancers interviewed in Lost Rhythm of Salsa have said they can dance on one to any song, any rhythm, any tempo, and it doesn't matter what's happening in the music. The same with Salsa on two. Dancing should be about having fun. But there comes a time when there's more to dance, dancing than just having fun. Without being diplomatic in your response, Mr. Martinez. This is going to be fun. Please share what you say to a dancer who has no desire to grow beyond their comfort zone. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to say immediately that I'm different uh, in this respect, that I, I believe that people, uh, you can't force people to understand something. That when people are ready, then they can understand something. If they are not ready, then there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of retaliation and there's a lot of fight and you end up causing more conflict than you do clarity. For example, the stage of a, of, that a man has to go through, the turn pattern thing, the lots of turns, that's a stage, that's puberty. That's, <laughs> we have to go through that. I went through it. I went through it. The problem is that if we don't recognize it as a stage and we recognize it as truth, then we're in trouble, right? I went through it because I had to figure out what this was all about, what I can do with this, how, how do I use this, what's in my arsenal, what are the possibilities. The poor woman just happens to be <laughs> the victim, right? But check this out. Women go through their stages too, right? Women go through their stages. The first thing a woman is concerned about is looking cute. <laughs> she's not concerned with being rhythmically down. She's not worried about the relationship of lead and follow. She's not worried about that. She wants to look cute right away, quick, fast, right? So we go through these stages. Ultimately, maybe they're never ready to understand it. 
that doesn't change my life. That doesn't make me sour about anything. I'm, I'm, I'm still going to enjoy this immensely, whether you get it or not, right? And so are these people, right? The, the people that gave this to us, right? The people from the Palladium era, the, 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 the dancers who, Carmen Cruz, these people made it possible for us to be able to do this. We cannot hear the clave. The clave sticks are not even used. Is there a way to distinguish the clave even though the clave sticks on her? Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent question, and, and uh, I'll ask all of you to join me. We can uh, do something together so you can understand. <laughs> <laughs> so, who here dances on what? Don't be shy. <laughs> right, let me rephrase. Who prefers to dance on what? Okay. Who prefers to dance salsa on two? So that means the other two styles that I'm going to say, I'm going to see a lot more hands. So who here, who here prefers to dance Palladium on two? Carmen, I'm waiting for you to raise your hand at some point. <laughs> <laughs> who, here, who, here prefers, who here prefers to dance in club? So you, uh, you may not remember, but... Uh, Palladium on two is, uh, is the basic structure and fundamental, which is based on the clave. You saw what I wrote at the bottom. The clave, two, three clave, what beat does it start on? Two. 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 On the two, and when does it end? Eight. On the eighth. If you have a three, two clave, when does that begin? One. One. And when does it end? Seven. 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 It, ends on, it ends on the seventh. Seven. All right? How to determine the clave in the music? What other instrument do you think it's the bass? Bass. If you listen to the bass, you have to listen. Does it strike on the one? If it strikes on the one, then what clave is it? If it strikes on the eight, dominantly or predominantly, what clave is it? It's a two, three clave. So if you join me in an experiment, or not an experiment, in a uh, demonstration here, if you join me, snap on one, clap on two, Snap three, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> it goes like this. Join me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Somebody count me. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to do a three two clave, and we cannot cross paths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One, two, three, I'm not clapping with you, right? Yeah. But now I'm going to do a two, three clap. Continue when I clap, that's what the bass is going to do. It's going to strike on the one. And if we're not on the same beat, then you know it's not a two, three, or a three, two clave. So again, the bass strikes predominantly on the one. What clave is it? If it strikes predominantly on the eight, what clave is it? There you go. I just want to say that lis listening is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. is, is learning to listen is part of the problem. Because now, now go and find that damn bass in that 
and that's all. <laughs> you have to locate it. You have, you have to recognize it. You have to figure out what it's doing without the interference and the points of congruence of all the other instruments. Now you have to isolate it. You have to find it. And so part of what you have to do is learn to listen. That's the first thing that we have to figure out is learn to listen. Right? There's the musicians say, if you can hear it, you can play it. We have to be able to open up the ear and find it. And we, we, we don't do a lot of that. We walk around, we don't listen. Like, we, yeah. we hear things, but we don't listen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. I, I, I'm having a fabulous time right now. <laughs> I don't even believe this is what <laughs> So what I figured from all this is if you can't count, you shit out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I feel in some of the segments like I was listening to like a jazz improvisation or a jazz riff? Back in the day in the Palladium era, the bass used to play eight notes during eight beats. But what do you hear now? Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Does that make sense? So the changes that have occurred, this is probably sounding maybe strange to you or unique or jazzy to you because they don't do it like that anymore. This is the way it used to be done. Thank you, Josue, for exposing us to the history and for placing the importance on the music and its relation to the dance and also for elevating the status of musicians. My question is for Frankie. When you're dancing to a live band that's grooving and they're going into an extra monia and they're playing the song for eight or nine or ten minutes, what do you do? <laughs> I stop when I want to stop and I start when I want to start. You know? Nobody says you're supposed to stay there with the musicians. The musicians are not doing anything aerobic. <laughs> they could do that all night. You can tell your partner, you know, I'm beat, right? I have emphysema, whatever. I need to take a break. You know? you don't have, you're not supposed to finish this. Nobody says you're supposed to finish the song. If you, you need to sit down, you, I sit down. I'm not, I'm not trying to kill myself. I, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. You have to go back and listen to that music and allow it to, to, uh, to uh, just to cover you. You've got to immerse yourself in it.